Hi everyone. I think I'm a little high there. That's probably a bit better. Are you all there? We're getting into the first week of February. It's really nice to actually be heading into February and the weather here has got a totally different feel because it's got a lot more I was going to say sunnier, not really sunnier, but brighter, a lot brighter this week. I get to go home and go for a nice walk in the evening where there's actually sunshine or daylight for the big majority of it. So it's really nice. It feels like come through the the darker part of the year and kind of coming out the other side. Hey, um, I hadn't I had a few things I was going to kind of talk with you about with what's kind of going on here behind the scenes and stuff. But if there was anything in particular you'd like me to talk about or you wanted to ask me about, shoot me a question up along here. So just put it into the comments. Um, let me know if there's something you'd like to hear about. Um, otherwise, I'll kind of just tell you what's been going on here for the last week. Um, you like what I'm wearing? Oh, thank you. This is a very cozy one. This is Daykite. This one's knit in Nua Worsted. It's top down super simple the two fronts of it just fold over and when it's open it can actually um it can just be um, you know a two a kind of a water a waterfall waterfall i think is the term for it front as well the original version i knit in this was in um donegal soft which we also have in stock which works really well for it as well so that's a, a more rustic looking but still 100 percent merino um newer worsted um because the yak is just it's probably a slightly softer version but they both work really nicely um, and this one is unexpected mccall's is the the name of the color um, for anyone out there who might be newer to knitting this is also set up as kind of um one of the first learn to knit classes um where for or rather learn to knit your first sweater classes because it's top down it's all garter stitch it's in one piece raglan shoulder increases and all of the i-cord edging is all integrated so the whole thing is done in one piece with a couple of different levels kind of in it so like for the the starting one here where it's an i-cord um it's not cast on what i actually i don't like an i-cord cast on very much i find it gives it a little bit gappy so what i have done is provisional cast on and then when you come back you just do an i-cord bind off or for anybody who doesn't want to mess with the provisional cast on, if you're newer to knitting and you just want to focus on the sweater, is an ordinary cast on where you can just pick up stitches and do an I cord, applied I cord at the end, which is the, uh, the same thing. Um, the pattern's called Dakite, D A C I T E. Um, I'll put it up in the notes as well afterwards. Um, how am I keeping it closed? It's two buttons. There's one button here and one button there. So, and it's double layered as well. So it's kind of very nice and warm in the front. You're currently knitting your second day kite. I, it's one of, it's just, it's kind of a firm favorite. It's from a couple of years ago from, there was a book called Among Stones and I knit it. And then I took it out and knit another uh, version this, because the first one was the one that was in Studio Donegal Soft Merino, or sorry, Donegal Soft. And this one was just because I wanted to see how it worked in the newer worsted and I loved it as well. They're different, but they're both uh, really nice. So works works for both yarns because they've both got a little bit of drape and a little bit of softness. And it's you can even knit this one, I think, um, kind of a little bit oversized uh, so that it's more of a kind of a, an outdoor, not coat coat, but jacket style thing. Um, and the back of it, there's some decreases down there in the middle, so it's a small bit of shaping in the back, but you can kind of add or take away that if you want to. It doesn't have to be in there. If you prefer something straight down, you can just knit it straight down as well. But there you go. I've ended up having a little chat about something that I had no intention or no idea I was going to talk about, but it's definitely one of my favorites uh, and a good one for anyone who's newer to top-down knitting or sweater knitting or one-piece knitting or anything like that. Because I know um, that not everybody knits garments for themselves, so it might be a good place to start. So we have been packing the orders for the uh, the quilted feather knit along, um, and I will. I'll just warn you, anyone who got cumulus, for some reason it's still sitting in on post, so the postal system, customs being paid because it comes in from the UK. All of that have been paid. 
and it still hasn't arrived. We'd expect it at the start of this week, um, but fingers crossed that it comes tomorrow and we can get that out. But like the rest of the post heading out seems to be a lot faster. But just to give you a little heads up that if you're waiting for one with cumulus in it, it might take a little bit longer. We do have a few of the kits that I haven't shown you in person that I just got over here that we have in stock because the Manos order came in a lot sooner. So I was going to grab some of the yarns here. Here we go. Here are a few of the Manos yarns that I have. Um, this is, isn't this the prettiest color? This is the Carbitho. And we've got this one. This is Primrose. And we've it paired with... If I remember, this is Inkwell, and those two are very pretty together. So there's a nice bit of contrast between the two of those. I think it looks a little less pink here. It's really a, a very delicate pink. And the other one, which is probably one of my favorite colors, is Ultramarine. Look at that color. And we've got two options that go with that. There is the Silver Tea Set, which is kind of more this a light gray, or this one is the porcelain and the porcelain one is kind of cream with little slight overtones of beige I suppose is probably the best way of putting it um, but I think this is one of my favorite colors so I'm thinking I should I shouldn't be here I'll be getting you all excited about things that are going to be a while down the line this particular color I'm thinking of pairing with a blast of light and doing something like a a sweater in a brioche, really basic brioche, but just leaving this and the blast, because this with blast of light, it's it kind of adds a little extra firmness to the blast of light and just real bit of depth to the yarn. Um, and the two just work really nicely together. I'm suddenly getting the craze for knitting with single strands of lace mohair, because normally I don't like double stranding things, but I'm discovering that mohair, because of its inherent stickiness, when you're stranding that with another yarn, it basically sticks to it. So you don't really have the problem that you normally would with two strands separating. And that was new to me because it didn't, I mean, I suppose it should have occurred to me, but it didn't actually occur to me until I started trying it. So I'm definitely, um, it's definitely something I'm going to give a shot at over kind of coming into the autumn. Because at this point as well, I'm slowing down pattern production a little because we've got quite a few clubs and focusing on those right now. So any of the patterns that I'm working through or doing the swatches or the samples for, it's probably kind of next autumn they'd be for so that I can take my time and just go through them, I suppose methodically is the best way to put it. And one of those is the, I was talking a few weeks ago and I think Elsa Louise pulled it up there, was asking me last week about it. So I brought it with me. It's the Donegal yarns, the chunky, um, the soft Donegal chunky. That cardigan that I was knitting over um, over Christmas, I've kind of, worked, let me grab it here. I've been making some progress with it, but this is one of those case in points where I'm not going to be releasing this under the autumn because I've got a lot of, a lot of other patterns that are basically need to get moved through to get tech edited, to get tested and photographed and all the rest. So. This one is going to be moving more slowly so just to give you a warning that it's going to be a little while before you see this one but it's a soft Donegal it's a top down raglan reverse stockinette stitch here stockinette stitch in the sleeves and all one piece um, a little reminiscent of what I'm doing except the big difference with this is the collar here is actually um, it's just going to be a stand-up collar around but also in garter and with the eye cord as well but the same kind of idea, it's like it's all stockinette stitch, garter stitch, eye cord. So the basics <laughs> uh, with some of my favorite, but a slightly different style because this is a more waist length jacket style. And the fact that it's heavier means that you can get away with that. And then with the collar rather than a full double fold over. But I think this is a good autumn one. So I'm going to keep working away on that so that it'll be it'll be the autumn when this comes out so just to give you a warning that it will be there just a little bit down the line um what else i was also pulling out some other samples another sample that i've been looking at um that i haven't seen in quite a while and none of you may have seen it before is this is vivido it's top down cardigan see i'm really into just top down simple at the moment but it's top down 
kind of a scoop neck in the front, very simple raglan, and then the sleeves of it have just got a series of slip stitches. So it's just stock net with slip stitches, but they kind of tend to curl a little, but with blocking it goes straight. Again, I cord in the bottom. Um, this sample was knit in Cascade Eco, um, which I think is, I know they have it, and I think they may have had it in a worsted or a lighter weight than it actually is, but I think it's probably an iron weight. So to me, a good substitute for that would be um, st the Studio Donegal, Soft Donegal, I think would be a good, uh, a good yarn to do that. But I do love the bright pink color. And in fact, there's a Studio Donegal in a fuchsia that I think would look amazing in this. So, but yeah, just super, super simple. You're in isolation, so you've been binging on fruity knitting uh, and all the episodes with me in them. <laughs> yeah, I've done a kind of, well, a couple of, of fruity knitting episodes. It's always actually a pleasure to work with her because she's just, she's so professional and such a perfectionist that she's got a very exacting list of what she wants you to give when you're getting ready to do a podcast with her or, you know, or an interview with her. Um, and at the time you're kind of like, it's just fine, just do it. But then when you come back and you see the end result, it, you know, you realize how much work goes into actually producing a high quality um, knitting podcast. So yes, I would suggest anyone, if you haven't gone seen Fruity Knitty before, go take a glance. She's got some great stuff for sure. Um, all right, I think that's most of what's been kind of happening this week. The other thing, you can't hear it upstairs, but Laura is up there with an actual mountain of Blosty yarn because this year for our Celtic Knits Club, all of the yarn is coming in one go. And the reason for that is they had some mill delays last time around. And so it meant that the club installments were kind of slow getting out or there was a delay here and there. But by actually getting it all um, in at once, it means that we won't have any yarn delays this year. Now, knowing our luck, we'll probably end up with some other delay, but no yarn delays. But it means that we've got, <laughs> like literally, I think it might be so far a dozen boxes, like the boxes are to the floor, to my waist kind of size boxes, not little boxes. And they're being unpacked and all the rest of it upstairs and sorting out problems and making sure there's nothing missing and, you know, all of that fun stuff. But it does mean that we have masses of wool insulation. So, you know, if, you, if anyone needs to borrow some wool just to keep themselves cozy and warm in the storms that you've got somewhere up the north there in the US, then, you know, just buy extra wool and build a little wool fort for yourself. It works really well. <laughs> so anyway, that's our little woolly story here today. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, as you may hear from me, I'm a little bit wired up at the moment. Not really sure of what happened this week, but I feel like I've... Um, ingested either way too much caffeine or just oversleeping because I'm having a fantastic energy week where I'm getting loads of stuff done and getting through my to-do list of things that I've been avoiding. I'm enjoying it so much because I had been, it had been building and building up in the background with stuff that I was afraid to tackle. So it's extremely satisfying to start moving my way through that list. Elsa Louise, when will I have the newer worsted in Hatter's Teal again? Um, I believe that it'll be the summer when the, um, the supplier will have that again. And um, there was a mistake made in the ordering the last time round. They forgot to order that color. And so it's every six months is when they get new stock in. And so it's going to be the summer before the next one come in. So it means that we're completely out of the Hatter's Teal, I'm afraid, in the, um, in the, in the worsted. But should hopefully by the summer, I think like May, June kind of way um, will be when I'd be expecting it back in. And I know it's, I'm kind of sad that it's not here as well. It's one of my favorite colors, but, but soon, soon. It won't, it'll, the, the months will fly before you even know what's going on and it'll be back in stock again. So goodbye everyone. Thank you again for joining me. See you all next week.